This is a Fox News alert. A federal judge in San Francisco has struck down President Trump's executive order targeting sanctuary cities. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, President Trump's order sought to deny federal funds to cities that actively resist immigration law and try and shield illegal aliens from deportation. But now Judge William Oreck has blocked it. He calls it an illegal effort by the executive branch to dictate local policy. The ruling is a big win for now for the many mayors of liberal cities across the country who vowed to resist federal immigration enforcement. Chicago says welcome. The actions by President Trump turn on the head upside down what we stand for. This city will not be bullied by this administration. The executive orders are counter to our constitution and a threat to this city's values. The executive order will not change how we enforce the law in New York City or how we do business on behalf of the people. I believe in our sanctuary city status. Uh, I think there are hundreds of mayors all over this country that are saying the same thing and we stand united. So the immigration order of the White House apparently violates the Constitution. That's the position of the court and of these many mayors. What exactly does the Constitution say about immigration? David Cortez is on the Board of Supervisors for Santa Clara County, California, which was a party in the lawsuit, and he joins us now. David, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you. So here's the statement that your county issued after this court order. Santa Clara County sent a strong message to the Trump administration today that the county will continue to uphold the U.S. Constitution and protect the rights of all of its residents despite threats. What constitutional rights specifically are you upholding here? Well, the executive order was riddled with constitutional problems, and uh, according to Judge Oreck, um, it was a sweeping victory today. Uh, we can't hold people as, uh, as a county uh, without due process, without probable cause, without a warrant in a criminal jail for a civil violation. Uh, we knew that. We knew the President of the United States can't usurp uh, the spending powers of the United States Congress um, and can't interfere with local control by co trying to coerce people uh, and counties uh, by threatening to take away billions of dollars of federal funding that's completely unrelated to his policies. Okay. You, you, you packed a lot in that response. Let's go point by point here. Does the Constitution guarantee a right of the illegal aliens to be here in the country? The Constitution guarantees the right of all persons to due process, uh, regardless of status. Uh, and that's pretty clear uh, in a plain reading of the Constitution of the United States. Do you believe that people in Santa Clara County who are here illegally have a right to be here? Uh, I. We don't do deportation here. We do uh, uh, criminal law. We do civil law. That's what the state of California allows us to do as a county. Right. Uh, it's up to uh, ICE and Homeland Security to determine uh, who's entitled to be here and who's not entitled to be here, and we leave that up to them. But what's your opinion? I mean, the, you all took issue with this executive order. You brought it to court. You're happy with the result. You're celebrating it. Do people in Santa Clara County, California, they illegally have a right to be there, yes or no? Uh, I'm telling you that when the President of the United States tells us to detain people without probable cause, without a warrant, without due process in a jail, even though they do not have uh, a criminal record, um, whether or not uh, the President of the United States tells us to do that, um, it's a violation of the Constitution of the United States. Right, so, okay, so you're not answering uh, We're the not going to do that. We're not going to detain that, people. That, that's not, of course, what the President's saying. He's saying uphold federal immigration law, and if you don't, there is going to be a consequence. You're, we're going to take your federal funds away. So you're basically establishing a principle here that the federal government has no right to tell local governments how to behave, and it can't punish them if it disobeys. So if, I don't know, Jackson, Mississippi decided to resegregate the schools, would it be okay for the administration to pull federal funding? Now, we're not talking about desegregation of schools. We're talking about the President of the United States telling us to detain people in criminal jails uh, so that ICE, so that his federal agency can come and interview them when they're good and ready. And the federal courts uh, over the course of the last two or three years have told us that that's unconstitutional. They've told us that if we do that, we're subject to civil liability. Um, there's several jurisdictions that have been successfully sued for civil liability. Um, but the President of the United States is saying, I don't care what the federal courts say, do it anyway. I want no. you to do uh, the Secure Communities Program, is what he calls it, a program that was dismantled by Homeland Security voluntarily last year, and this president comes along and says, do it anyway. Okay, this would be not the president's will, but this is the law. These are federal immigration laws that were passed by the Congress. These are not 
these are not regulations that the executive branch thought up. Elected members of Congress passed these laws, and you're saying you don't have to follow them, and you can't be punished. And my only point is a very obvious one, which is the federal government continuously tells local governments, you've got to follow the law or else we're going to withhold funds. You see that happen all the time, and you're saying that's no longer the case. We act on our conscience. Yeah, this judge says you cannot coerce local governments by withholding funds, especially those funds that are unrelated to uh, the policy objective that you're trying to achieve. That's what this president did. It is the president of the United States. It's an executive order. It wasn't directed at Congress. It was directed at local cities and counties across the country. You had over 400 local cities and counties joined together saying uh, this is a usurpation of power. This uh, violates the Constitution of the United States. It violates separation of powers. Thank God for the judicial branch because we have an executive branch that's trying to direct local governments when they're not empowered to do so. They're okay, trying. So, uh, this executive I, branch is trying uh, look, to usurp I, I get, Congress's is, is, power. Please, please, please spare me the lecture because you've just elided over a fact that you're ignoring, which is we just had eight years of this happening. The Obama administration threatened to withdraw federal funds from states that didn't go by its transgender bathroom policies. Was that, was that unconstitutional also? Well, I'm here to tell you that since 2010, uh, we made the decision here along with Cook County. Um, two counties in the United States of America stood up uh, to Homeland Security and ICE and said, We're, we are not going to hold people in an unconstitutional manner uh, despite whatever requests you make. Uh, we've been vindicated. Uh, we're not only vindicated today, okay. we've been vindicated one, see, by look, every court that's uh, looked look, at the I'm, issue. I'm, I'm sorry, and I've given you, hold on, I've given anyway. you an opportunity to give your editorial. I'd like you to answer my question, which is a very simple one. There's a precedent being set here by a federal judge that states do not have to comply with federal law and can't be punished for not doing so. That is a major departure from where we've been for my whole lifetime. Do you think that the Obama administration was right to threaten a withholding of federal funds from states that didn't comply with its transgender bathroom laws? That's a uh, orders. That's a really simple question. Uh, I'm telling you that this is the first president of the United States that's threatened with an executive order to withhold, um, in our case, up to $1.7 billion from us. It's unconstitutional for him to try to wield that kind of power. The federal court agreed with us today. Th that's not um, true. The Constitution I'm sorry, that's of the United that, States. That's not the true. Constitution of the United States, it is true. It's Read not it. true. The Obama it's administration the threatened to withhold States. funds from Indiana for messing with Planned Parenthood funding. The Carter administration threatened to well, withhold federal about, funds uh, for people who didn't obey the 55 mile an hour speed limit. This has been going on a long time, and you're saying that because you don't like a law, you don't have to comply with it, but every other taxpayer in America still has to send you money. So wh where does this come from? This is a brand new thing. At least acknowledge that. It doesn't matter what I say. The federal huh. courts today uh, acted. Um, they said what we already knew and what you should know is that the Constitution, the Constitution of the United States is the law of the land. It's paramount. Um, whatever you're talking you're about this up in terms of along. federal codes no, or agency you, you, rules. I'm not talking about federal uh, that, codes or agencies. I'm talking about federal laws. And when you ignore them, does the federal government have a right to punish you? And you're saying no. What you're saying is basically California is its own country now. And if that's where the way you want to go, good luck defending your borders, I guess this would be my point. California is leading the country in the right direction because yeah, we're honoring okay. the Constitution of the United States. And there's a whole bunch of people across the country that believe that, that are following our lead. Right. Uh, we're happy to be in the lead. We're fortunate to have won this case today. Supervisor Cordes, thanks for joining us.